Hey, I'm Ryan Lagarde. And I'm Craig Tovey. And welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagarde. And Craig Tovey. Today's book is... <gasps> I Need, Need My Monster. Monster by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Let's get started. Ah! What? Hi. <laughs> gotcha. I, I Need, Need My Monster. Monster by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week, Gabe. What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing, his nose whistling, the scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week, and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards, then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? Wow! Oh my gosh, a monster under the bed. Wow, that is intense. I never had a monster in my bed, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, I had a monster growing up. You did? Oh yeah. Tell me about it. Oh, he was in the same room as I was Ooh. all the time. And he was behind bars, and he would just, in the middle of the night, just out of nowhere, go, bah! Bah! Oh my gosh, that's bad. And I would bad. wake up, and I'd be so scared. Yeah. But then my mom and dad would come in and the monster would go quiet. Wow. And no one knew about the monster. Whew. It's terrifying, man. I'm sorry. I was scared. Yeah, I bet. I had a monster, I tell you. I, yes, yes, you just described it. I it's did. scary. When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low, breathy voice. My name is Herbert and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite, and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <sighs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. There was some more creaking. Then Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening. He said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible, shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleekly brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude. I asked, but is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell that this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws, like Gabe's, I thought. I heard some more scratching, and I knew Ralph was gone. Oh, spooky. Oof, brings back memories. Right, so this monster of yours, did it ever like go away? No, it stayed. <gasps> and as I got bigger, the monster got bigger. Then it started to get into my toys at night and it would talk, it would say a word like ball. <gasps> and then I'd hear something get hit and then it would just babble, 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 babble and I didn't know what it was saying. <gasps> wow, that sounds terrifying. It was scary. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the edge. The claws were impressive, jagged, and dark, and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. 
Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am! She snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you a picky one? She sniffed, and then she was gone. Was I being too picky? No, I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. Then I heard a shuffling noise and some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, the name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws, but do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is stumpy, Max slurped. <laughs> but I do have an unusual long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know when I might lick you. I fell back on the bed laughing. <laughs> well, if you're not even going to try to work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, huh? <laughs> Maybe he just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I don't you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? Man, that is some scary stuff. Ryan, I tell you what, if any monster standing next to my bed talking to me, count me out. Oh yeah, when my monster started talking, mm. the game changed. He was a regular blabbermouth. He'd be like, can I play with your toys? Mm. Do you want to go trick or treating with me? Mm. Are you asleep yet? And then sometimes he would go and tell my mom and dad on me and say Ryan was hitting me. Oh, he would go tell, tell your mom on you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, so he was around like during the day and stuff too? My monster was everywhere. That's, that's terrifying. Scary. I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed, loud creaking with scratching. I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry I'm late, kid. Whew. It was Gabe. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't, he explained. Those fish scare too easily. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. You keep me on my toes. Ah, toes. A delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. So... You had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monsters can scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ha! I knew it. We're made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, he said. I'd like to nibble your pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get them. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, pushing a pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. 
I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. Ooh. Ooh. Scary stuff, Ryan. Yeah. I do have one question about your, your monster. Mm -hmm. um, so did it ever go away? Not when I lived at home. It was there all the time. When yeah. I got my license, I had to drive it around. Um, but when I went to college, my monster stayed home to finish up high school. And then <laughs> okay. it went to college. And then my parents were empty nesters. Right. But then my monster and I came back together, and he was the best man at my wedding. And is now the uncle to my children. What's your uh, monster's name? Joshua Lagod. So your little brother? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a monster. It was your little oh, brother. it makes so much more sense. You didn't know till the very end. <laughs> well, sort of. Three quarters. <laughs> I Need My Monster by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Thanks for watching Storytime with Ryan Lagarde and Craig Toby. But now it's time for <gasps> Shout Outs! Adley and Callie in Las Vegas, Nevada. Addie, Ellie, Ramey in Riverton, Utah. Grady and Georgia Davidson in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Cooley Ranch Library in Colton, California. So Cooley. So Coltony. So if you want your own shout out on an upcoming episode of Storytime with Ryan and Craig, just go to RyanandCraig.com and send us a message. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.